What's up YouTube, Scott Scanner Tradition back with another video. I'm going to do a video today talking about uh, completion of the 1957 Tops Green Bay Packers team set. This is a set that I've been working on for quite a while, um, technically. Um, I picked up uh, the two bigger cards to this set probably back in like 2015, 2014, 2016, somewhere around there. So I've had those two cards for quite a while. Um, and then I've just slowly been working on the commons and uh, just recently, uh, last week, ended up finally getting the two remaining cards in the set, uh, which I did settle for in PSA 7s, which I will talk about shortly as we kind of go through all the cards in the set. Um, I just didn't want to fork out the money for an 8. Otherwise, uh, the entire rest of the set is in high grade, all in PSA 8. So I think it, as of right now, is the... Because um, I did put it on the set registry. I believe it is the 8th set, 8th best Packers team set overall right now. Which there are some <laughs> people that have some bangers of sets. Um, but what gives some people a little higher ranking is that they have some of the commons in a in a 9. I think each card in that set is only, uh, you only get credit, uh, they did like a, a multiplier of 1 for each card. Whereas technically, you know, if you have the Bart Star rookie in the grade of an eight, that should have a higher multiplier. You should get more credit for that card. But I think the team, the way the team sets work like that, is each card is only worth one on the multiplier. So even if you get a PSA nine of a common, that can really boost you up in the set. Even though you know most people would much rather have the PSA eight of the Bart Star. So I'll kind of go through the set, um, kind of talk about the set a little bit, and um, yeah, I'm just really thrilled to finally. Uh, put the finishing touches on this set because um, it's just a beautiful set, 1957 Tops football. Um, it just was a great year for the Packers. Obviously, their new stadium opened up. Uh, at the time, it was called City Stadium in 1957. Uh, it would later become uh, named Lambeau Field after Curly Lambeau's passing in the 1960s. But yeah, just a great, great set overall and really happy to share it with you. So let's start going through some of the commons uh, first. And here are two of them. Uh, this is Tobin Rote. He was a quarterback for the Packers in the 50s. A beautiful card there. This is in the grade of an 8. Uh, even in a PSA 8, so a high-grade version of this card. Um, and the card stock on these, for the most part, for most examples, did hold pretty well. So you can get some fairly decently great examples of a lot of these cards, at least... 7s, 8s, and 9s. There's very few 10s in existence in the 57 top set just due to inherent flaws. But uh, Tobin Rote, uh, you can pick one of these up for about 30 bucks. So nothing too crazy on the Tobin Rote. Um, now these cards were released in two different releases. There's the the first series release, cards numbered 1 through 88. So this card falls within that. Um, those are a lot more common. And then the there was a second series release, cards numbered 89 through 154. Uh, so 66 cards in total in that second release. Those cards are a little more scarce to find. Um, and of those 66 cards in that second release, uh, 44 of them are are a lot more scarce, whereas 22 of them are double prints because they had uh, some room left on the sheet there. So they printed uh, some of the cards from the first series again, including the Johnny Unitas rookie, which is one of the most popular cards in the set. Um, that's one of the double prints. So there are a lot more out there of the Johnny Unitas uh, but yeah, Tobin Rote you can find for about 30 bucks as part of that first series release. Uh, then we have the Bill Forrester. You can see this is also a first series release at number 69. And uh, also in the grade of an 8, pick this up for about 30 bucks. Offensive lineman for the Packers. Oh, let's just put them like that. I think I'm gonna, they're going to fall down if I put them up the other way. Um, and then um, these cards sell for just a couple dollars more. Um, here's the first one. Al Carmichael was a halfback for the Packers. And uh, these sell for about 35 bucks in PSA 8. So again, considered a common. And uh, you can see numbered uh, 57. So this is part of that first release as well. And uh, we have Gary, Gary Knaffel, who was the PA, PA address inside the stadium for many years for the Packers after he retired from actually playing uh, in the grade of an 8. Um, again, this is a first series release, so more common. Uh, another, you can get uh, the Gary Knaffel, Knaffel for about 35 bucks as well. 
So again, a common but a really cool card nonetheless. Um, and then these are these next few are also considered commons, but they're just a little more expensive. The first one uh, is a Fred Cone. This is technically a second series release, so a little more difficult to find in the grade of an eight. Uh, these typically sell uh, in the sixty dollar range in PSA eight. And a beautiful card there. Fred Cohn from Clemson University. And then here we have a recent Pro Football Hall of Famer a couple years back, Bobby Dillon, all-time Packers interception leader in the grade of an 8. Uh, you can pick these uh, Bobby Dillon cards up for about uh, 60, uh, excuse me, uh, 75 bucks. So this one used to be more of a common, you know. It's number 9, so it was in that first series release. But when he made the Hall of Fame... Um, it kind of had an effect on all of his card prices, most notably his rookie. But, you know, it does have a little bit of a tertiary effect on all of his cards. So, beautiful example there of the Bobby Dillon and an 8. And uh, here's another one. Bill Houghton is a great wide receiver for the Packers in the 50s. And this is in the grade of an 8. Uh, you can pick up this card for about 60 bucks as well. So just a little more sought after than the, the other commons, about twice as expensive for the Houghton. And here's another one, Dave Hogg Hanner, nicknamed the Hogg because he was from Arkansas, the Razorbacks. Great of an eight as well. Uh, you can pick up one of these uh, for about 50 bucks in the grade of an eight. But also considered a common. And again, first series release as well. Um, and then here are the two cards I just got in last week. The first one is uh, Howard Ferguson, uh, numbered 132. So you can tell this is part of that second release. Uh, you can tell there's a little bit of a print defect there on the face. Um, again, grade of a 7. And just a little off-centered, but these are incredibly difficult to find in 7s and 8s. Um, just for note, the last two 8s, have sold for around $900. So I just was not going to... I, I personally just didn't want to spend that money on a non-rookie card. But, you know, these are considered short prints uh, and second series released. And Howard Ferguson, this card especially, is an uncorrected error card. You can see it's spelled F-U-R-G-E-S-N. And on the back, F-E-R-G-U-S-N. So the back is correct. The front is wrong. They did not correct this error. So basically, it's an uncorrected error card. And um, there's a really a great article on the PSA Card Facts website about this, written in 2017. And basically, it, it lists the top 10 common cards that are least found in the grade of an 8 or better. And this is number 5 on that list. So you, for whatever reason, I don't know if it was where it was on the sheet or... The fact that it's just scarce in general, these are incredibly hard to find in high grade. And it's number five on the all-time toughest list for commons in that set. Um, I paid about 175 bucks for this card. Um, I did pick it up from a friend of mine, Kurt, from uh, Baseball Card Emporium on eBay. A lot of you uh, know who Kurt is. Um, so he did give me a pretty good deal on this card. I still paid up for it a little bit. I mean, these cards sell anywhere in that 150 to 200 range. I paid 175 um, was happy to do that just to kind of cross it off the list again I just couldn't see myself paying $900 for this card at this point I just kind of wanted to complete the set so super happy to have that one um, I will keep an eye out for maybe a, a slightly better centered PSA 7 if I can find one but really happy to have it nonetheless um, and then here was the other one I got in last week the John Martin Kovich um, this is again part of the second series cards numbered 89 to 154 and this one's kind of a tough one, too. Um, I got a pretty good deal on this one. I wanted it in an auction. Paid about 60 bucks for it. Um, typically, they sell, you know, 70 80 or above. So I got a little bit of a deal on it. This one's really nicely centered. Um, but the last two sales in PSA 8 were over $600. So, again, just, did, just didn't want to fork out those high to mid $100 prices on non-rookie cards. But I felt like I got a pretty good PSA 7 right here. So those were kind of the last two I was looking for in the set. And they're uh, short prints. They're 
tougher to find in high grade because they're part of that second series release, but finally was able to do that. And then, of course, we have uh, the two biggest cards in the set. Um, we'll start out with this one here. This is the uh, Paul Horning rookie card, uh, which I have in the grade of an 8. Uh, price estimates on these, um, th these don't sell a whole lot, usually maybe 1 to 2 per year. Um, as of right now, I'd say 5000 plus for uh, the Horning. It's not what I paid for it. I've had this card for a good six seven years already so glad to have picked it up when i did um, but again you can see the number there number 151 so um all the uh big rookies are in that second series release in that set so it kind of makes them a little tougher in high grade but real happy to have a psa 8 example of the golden boy paul horning beautiful card there one that's you know probably staying in my collection for a very long time um and then I do have two examples of the Bart Starr rookie card. We'll show this one first. I uh, just picked this up last year. Uh, nice PSA 6 right there. Uh, in a PSA 6, these typically sell for about around that $1,600 range uh, as of right now. So uh, this is the one that I display. Um, just a you know, real nice example. was able to pick it up last year. Really fortunate to add a second one of these. Um, and then, last but not least, the uh, PSA 8 Bart Starr rookie card. Uh, again, 8's about as good as any reasonable person can do on this. Um, there's only three nines in existence and no 10s. And the pop on these 8's is about uh, 90, I think, somewhere around there. So there's not like a ton of these floating around. And they don't really exchange hands very often. Um, there have been a couple sales of this over the last year or so. And... Um, so I have a price estimate around this, around $17,000. Um, I don't often have this one with me. It's usually in the safety deposit box. But I, did, I wanted to make this video because <laughs> I did finally complete the set. Um, that is why I picked up the PSA 6 for display. So just kind of words words of wisdom there. Um, if you have really nice stuff and you're apprehensive about displaying it, you, know, you can pick up a slightly lower grade and be happy to display that one. And you can keep your nicer stuff stowed away that's a, a lot better peace of mind but real happy to have that one that's the, obviously the toughest one again it's a high number rookie card and um i talked about it before but the johnny unitas from this year was short per, uh was double printed so there's a lot more of those floating around because it was on the first and second sheets whereas the star was only single printed so about twice as more unitas is floating around out there other than that that's a wrap. I finally completed the set. Really happy to do so. Um, I'm going to uh, put it on display and really just kind of enjoy it. And it, it's been a couple of years in the making. And um, I think it was pretty reasonable to grab those PSA 7s instead of, you know, forking out what would probably have costed me, you know, $1,700 for the 8s. That being said, enjoy. hope you guys enjoyed the video and a couple of the facts about the 1957 Topps Packers set. And we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching.